In this video, we're going to be looking at alkenes for level 2 organic chemistry. You can download a study map for your organic chemistry exam from my website. Alkenes are all organic molecules which contain a double bond. Some examples of alkenes are shown here. To name these alkenes, we always look for the longest chain in our molecule which contains the carbon to carbon double bond. A table is shown here which gives me a clue as to what prefix to use. In the first example, my longest chain is only two carbon atoms long, so that corresponds to F. In my second example, it's three carbon atoms long, so prop and bute for the third one. And since alkenes all have the ending with ene, this means that my first three examples are ethene, propene, and butene. As another example, I have seven carbon atoms going from left to right. That makes that het. It's an alkene, so it ends with ene, but the double bond is at position 1, and I have to specify that, so it's hept 1 ene. If the double bond was shifted across to the second position, it would be hept 2 ene. If we shifted it across to the third position, it would be hept 3 ene. If it was shifted across to the fourth position, you would think it was called hept 4 ene, but it's actually still hept 3 ene, because if you numbered it from the right hand side to the left hand side, you would end up naming it as hept3ene. Remember, if you ever have a choice, go for the one where the number is minimized. Here's another example to naming an alkene. Same thing as before. Start off by looking for the longest chain which contains the double bond. In this case, the longest chain is still hept. It's still an alkene, so it still ends with ene. The double bond is at the third carbon atom from the right, so it's hept3ene. But this time, I have a methyl side group I know it's a methyl side group because this side group is only one carbon atom long. One carbon atom long corresponds to meth, and I use the letters YL as in methyl to show that it's a side group. I must also say where that side group is, and it's at the second carbon atom from the right, so that's 2 methyl hept 3 ene. Remember, if you have numbered your chain from the right hand side to the left hand side, that's the numbering system you must use. Another example here, same as before, look for the longest chain. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbon atoms again. That's hept 3 en because the double bond is at position 3 as well. This time I have two methyl groups, which corresponds to dimethyl. Di is for two. But I must say where both of those methyl groups are, I've got one at position 2 and I have one at position 5. So 2,5 dash dimethyl hept 3 en. Another example here, again, same as before, look for the longest chain. This time my longest chain is still seven carbon atoms long. It's still an alkene, and that double bond is still at position three, so it's still hept three E. This time I have a methyl group at position two, but I have a larger group here as well, which is a ethyl group at position five. I know it's an ethyl group because it's only two carbon atoms long, Two carbon atoms corresponds to F. Remember, we use the letters YL at the end to show that it's a side group. As for the reactions of alkenes, alkenes undergo something called an addition reaction. And this is our definition that we're going to use for an addition reaction. An addition reaction is when you add two atoms or groups of atoms to each carbon atom in a carbon to carbon double bond. It breaks the double bond as two new single bonds are formed. One addition reaction which alkenes do is that they can form haloalkanes and to do that you can add something called HX or X2 where X is a group 17 element. I've just shorthanded it here to G17. In your test and assessment actually write the word group, don't just write G17. So some examples of group 17 elements are fluorine, chlorine, bromine and iodine. Here's an example of a reaction, Pekini alkene. I'm going to react it with X2. Remember, in an addition reaction, the double bond breaks and two new single bonds are formed. So I'm going to show that the double bond becomes a single bond and I'm forming two new single bonds. All you do is you take the X2 and you add it across the double bond. So each X goes to each carbon. If my X was bromine from group 17, then I would just update the X's in that example. In another example, maybe if I add HX to any alkene, same thing as before, double bond needs to break, double bond becomes a single bond, two new single bonds are formed, that's our definition. 
or part of the definition for an addition reaction, the H and the X split up, put them on any of the two carbon atoms. Later on you're going to come across something called Makonikov's rule which you can see in another video called Rules of Reaction. Remember X can be any group 17 element, so F, C, L, B, R, I. If I had an example where X was C, L, I'll just update the X to become C, L. Alkenes can also undergo addition reactions with hydrogen in a platinum catalyst, or you can use nickel at 150 degrees. So here's an example here with an alkene. Remember that double bond breaks to form a single bond and two new single bonds. Remember, I could have used hydrogen or nickel. In this example, I'm just going to use hydrogen with a platinum catalyst. I show that by using a slash. Hydrogen is called the reagent, and the platinum catalyst is our reaction condition. This just adds hydrogen across the double bond, and that just gets updated on that equation there. Alkenes can also perform an addition reaction with water in acidic conditions. The H plus just means that it's acidic conditions. In this example here, here's an alkene, here's the water. Same deal as before, it's an addition reaction. The double bond becomes a single bond. Two new single bonds are formed. To work it out, I could have drawn water as HOH like this. If you had forgotten how to draw the shape of water, perhaps best to revise your structure and bonding again. All I do is I put the H on one of the carbons and an OH on the other carbon. Alkenes can also oxidize using permanganate or dichromate to form something called a diol. In an example here, here's an alkene. Same deal as before, double bond breaks, two new single bonds are formed. Now if I use permanganate, MnO4 minus, it's a purple color and it actually makes MnO2 which is a brown solid. It forms a diol just as before so all I'm doing is I'm putting OH on each of those carbon atoms in the double bond. Now if I had used acidified permanganate then I don't get MnO2 which is brown anymore, I get Mn2 plus which is colorless instead. Remember I could have picked permanganate or dichromate, here it is here with Cr2O7 2 minus which is dichromate, that's orange. We get the same product, but I make CR3 plus instead, which is green.